Hello and welcome to your first tutorial in Visual Basic. Now, this isn't so much of a tutorial as it is as a, an introduction, so uh, I won't really be going into any programming until the next video. So if you already know how to start Visual Studio and whatnot, you can just skip this. And the other half of this video will, will be me pretty much explaining what uh, this video series is about and pretty much introducing myself as well. But anyways, uh, on my website, programminghelp.org, uh, you'll see that there's an express edition that you can download in case you don't have your own compiler. I have the full version of Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, so that's what I will be using. I have not seen the express edition. I know I link you guys to it, but I've never opened. I've, I don't. I don't know what the express edition is like. I'm gonna assume it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, it is Microsoft's and it is Visual uh, Basic or Visual C++ or Visual whatever it is. But um. But yeah, I'm just going to open this. It's a shortcut to the file, and we can uh, see the Explorer. And it's going to take a while. So as you can see here, this is just the welcome page, just a bunch of advertisements from uh, Microsoft. I don't know if this is what you see, or, or if you're taking a college course and they gave you Visual Studio via an MSDN Alliance program, then maybe you could see it that way. You'll have this. But anyways, uh, in order to create a new project, and I'll explain these little things in a moment but just click new pro I want this to go away uh, click a new project here and for the for this video series we're gonna be using Windows form applications uh, if you are in a college course or something that's requiring you to start with console applications you can still learn the uh, core programming concepts such as if statements loops classes and everything uh, from these tutorials as well I'm just going to take it a step further. I will be my C++ series, for an example, will be consoles, uh, not Windows Forms. But I just want to do a Windows Form because because this this Visual Basic and both C Sharp, I will be aligning these two tutorials almost perfectly to be teaching the very same things just between the two languages. So basically, the only difference is the syntax. So if you want to learn C Sharp, or if you already know C Sharp and you're now watching this video series, the two series should be uh, pretty much interchangeable, pretty much the same thing. So if, you, if, so if you're watching this and you want to learn C Sharp, just so you know, I'll be repeating a lot of stuff. It's, it's pretty much the same stuff. It's, yeah. But anyways, um, well, back down here, you can just give it a name. I'll just call it, I don't know, example A, and click OK. And it will load everything for you. And as you can see here, this is the form. This is what the your application will look like uh, when you compile it. So if you just click it, as you can see, all these different properties popped up. All these properties have to do with the form itself, not with any buttons or text boxes that we will eventually put on there. When we do put them on there, you'll be able to click them and you'll see the properties for them. So, as you can see, it would take me forever to go through all of these, but basically, um, you can change the name of the form. This is how the Visual Basic will read the, pro the, the form, uh, so you can change it from here and that's how you would refer to it, but it won't change what's up here. In order to change what's up there, you have to go down to the actual text, so you can change that. So you have to change it and then click, en you have to click, change it, then hit enter and then the changes will be applied as you can see um, so as you do things like this there there's actual programming going on behind the scenes in Visual Studio that's doing these changes for you so it's really really nice and then, that's another reason why Visual Basic and C Sharp are uh, very good languages to learn first just to have a grasp on programming concepts before you move on to like Java or C++ but as you can see like if you were to grab this uh, where are the here it is here's the size the default size 300 by 300 if you watch those numbers as I just click and drag this oh there you go see now it changed uh, just just everything pretty much changes automatic automatically so it's really really nice and that's pretty much all I want to show you with uh, the properties you can just look through these yourselves color fonts all these different things you can change uh, here this was blank before I opened this project uh, form one dot v, whoops form one dot vb is pretty much your source file for this so that's why it ends with .vb if you're doing a C++ it would be CPP there and so on and so forth with whatever language you might be um, might have open so as you can see the properties window changed to this guy so if you want to go back to this just click this and you'll go back to 
saying the properties for the form. Uh, so this is the designer form1.vb. If you want to see the code, you can click this right here, view code. And then you'll see the code. So this is pretty much an empty class, and all of our information will, will go in between these. As you can see, it has the name form1 right there, and that would and that coincides with this form1 right here, not the form1 we saw below, as proof because we changed it. So this is how the program sees it. So you can click view code or view designer to go back between the two. When you do that, the tabs are open, so you can just go between them manually like this, or you can click those buttons. This is your refresh. You don't really have to worry about that. Uh, so I'm not going to actually show you any anything like that. But you can also do things when you create buttons in uh, text boxes and whatnot. You can actually double click them, or you can double click, yeah, double click the form itself. And then what happens is we get this little subroutine that is automatically created for us. Whoops, I don't want those highlighted. And uh, basically, as you can see here, this is a kind of like a little event that's created here. And it's a subroutine. So all the code that goes in between here uh, will occur as soon as form one loads. So basically, oh, I don't know what I'm doing there. There we go. Uh, so as soon as the form loads, as you can see by the name, and you can change the name if you want, but let's not do so. Uh, you can type in all your code here, and that will execute as soon as you run the program. Well, how do you run the program? Well, let's well first figure out how to save first. So when you save, always click the Save All. It will save all the, the project, the solutions, all the forms, the code, everything at once. So you don't have to worry about only certain things updating and others not. So this is just example A. It'll be saved to your My Documents slash Visual Studio, whatever version you're using, slash projects. So I'll click Save, and then it is created. So then after that, go to Build. You can just build it. And after you build it, you've actually created the file, but I'll show that to you in a moment. Before you do that, let's just try the debug. So what that is, is debugging is, in this is basically it just tests running your code. So it's going to go through your code, and then at the end, if you don't have any errors, uh, then it will run, and you can see just a little demo of it. So you can click F5, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll just press F5, and then here it is. No errors, of course, because there's, well, no code. And it just runs, so this is what it looks like. And then you can close it. Uh, if there are errors, uh, errors here is basically just something that's wrong with your code, and it can't continue, or maybe it crashed. It'll give you a description of it, which is why I love compilers. They pretty much tell you uh, where is it, and it'll tell you what files. So in case you have multiple forms open or multiple pieces of code open, it'll tell you what name and what line. So we need to see what line it's on, right? Because we don't have any lines here. So in order to do that, uh, yeah, tools, options, and go to text editor, then for all languages, click line numbers click OK and now we have the line numbers there and it will tell you what line number in case you have any errors warnings uh, your code will still be able to go with warnings assuming there's no errors and basically that's just the compiler the IDE which stands for integrated development environment is just saying whoa there maybe there's a variable that's not being used and we'll learn what variables are uh, in just a couple of videos maybe the very next one uh, but hey, maybe it's not being used. Well, if it's not being used, get rid of it, or make sure it's used, or just something, something like that. I'll have warnings like maybe the syntax might be a little messed up, but it won't affect the programming. Just something like that, and it'll tell you what line number as well. But it won't stop it from running if it's just warnings. Okay, so what else did I do? I want to say. Um. Ah, jeez. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you where it is. So basically, you just go to. Uh, your documents, go to Visual Studio 2010, go to projects, uh, what what I name this? Example A. And these are the, these are the solutions. You don't want to click these. You want to open them from inside your IDE instead of here. Just, just for a safety precaution. You don't have to. And then you can go to whoops, wrong one. Bin. And then go to either one of these. You should see it there. Or I guess not there. Go to debug, and then there it is. That's the application. You don't need any of these other files. I could copy this and put this on my desktop. It'll work. You just double click it, and here it is. So, uh, yeah, there it is.
So it's really, really, really nice. Did I show you how to build? Well, I guess not. Anyway, so yeah, there's there's that. So it's really, really nice. So that that's about all I really want to show you. Just show you the properties. You can see your files there and the and the warnings. Uh, you can just look through all these yourself. Yourself. These aren't. I'll probably go through some of these uh, as I go through through this series. But it's just it would take me like a million videos to explain all those different properties and all these different features when you probably don't need me to anyways. You could probably just go, oh, that's obvious. But uh, yeah, so allow me to uh, explain this video series. So my name's Adam, and I'm uh, really happy that you're here to to watch this and to learn a programming language. Uh, Visual Basic .NET and C Sharp .NET are actually very similar languages especially when you're working inside Microsoft Visual Studio the way it works the way the way they function is just so similar so I'm gonna be creating these two series uh, pretty much at the same time in fact I won't be uploading any of the videos until my level one which I'll explain in a moment is done so uh, so if you're watching this that means I already have the level one for both done uh, but anyways so uh, basically, I'm creating this video series for lots of different languages because sometimes... So this is going to be a bit, bit of a rant. If you just want to go on to the next video, you can go. But basically, oh my goodness, sometimes you have n no resources out there to really help you with things. Uh, I really encourage you, if you're watching this, whether you're in a college course or not, to have a textbook with you because I, as I pretty much admitted I won't be able to show you everything so you, it's good to have a textbook with you and maybe even read through some of the information as I'm explaining whatever I'm teaching in a in an episode so you can see oh well here's some certain properties or certain methods that Adam didn't show but you'll see it there because I won't I won't be able to go through everything that's there's like a billion different things but anyways uh, for both Visual Basic and C Sharp uh, this will this video series is an introductory course so basically the things I'll be going over is the fundamentals of creating an application like pretty much what I just did which is pretty much nothing uh, how to create variables uh, operators how to perform calculations making decisions with if statements and whatnot working with strings and constants lists loops uh, validation the difference between procedures and functions how to create multiple forms instead of just this one form, how to make it so others pop up, uh, modules, how to create little menus, like maybe an about up here or a file, you know, like these these are menus up here. Um, uh, files, I won't go over printing because that's a default. Structures and classes and collections. Uh, on top of that, we have all these different things here, these different resources, which I'll be going through um, later in the in the next video source so I you won't have to worry about this yet but um, ah, there we go but uh, just just the basic fundamentals of programming this is core programming and, and when it comes to both C sharp and visual basic I won't uh, until I learn this myself because I am a college student I'm just learning everything and as I pretty much master the material I'll be presenting it to you of course I wouldn't really consider myself a master I'm just a student I'm not you know, 40 years of experience, but um, but basically, I want to be able to help people that might not be able to have the money to afford to go to college. That that's another thing. Maybe you don't have the money. Uh, that 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 uh, is a big hardship. I know a lot of people that are in that pickle, and they would like to learn things. And it's really not fair for universities to shut everybody out of this education, especially when computer science in any other kind of engineering is number one when it comes to finding a job and getting a lot of money. So I would like to help, um, pretty much do this and be able to help you. So about a year from now, I'll, I'll probably do Visual Basic and C Sharp .NET Level Two, in which I'll be doing th things like lists and stacks and queues and uh, data structures. Uh, I'll be doing data structures for Java and C plus plus long before I do them for these two languages. But um, yeah, I'll be doing that. And eventually, I'll be doing like ASP .NET for web development and networking and even more advanced stuff even beyond that so um, please bear with me it'll be a couple years before I maybe not not even two years maybe like a year and a half before I go that far shouldn't be too long uh, and then I'll have all professional corporate level
kind of programming practices is on here. But for now, it's just simple college level stuff that's not complicated. But eventually, I, I will get those stuff for you. And um, that's all I pretty much want to explain for this video series. And I hope you continue with me to the next video and we can start programming.